What's going on? Welcome back. Wild card pick season is over. Um, records for the year were real quick. I went 71, 69, and three. Steed screwed himself with a bad week in the last week of the season. <laughs> he did positive the entire year to go yeah. 59, 61, and two. Unfortunate. Um, we at least did really well on the on the season over unders. We talked about it on the podcast. Um, that will be released, I think it released yesterday when you watch this. But with that being said, let's get into wild card picks. We're going to be picking every game because we're just ballsy like that. You know, no regular season where we get to pick what we want. We're picking every game. Let's start off Colts versus Bills. Steed, who you got this week? Uh sticking with my gut on this one. I'm taking Bills minus six and a half. Uh, the Colts, this is a... This is a good matchup for the Colts, as we see they can run the ball and have a very good defense. But I'm just going to believe in the hype. Uh, the Bills are hot on offense. They, they're they putting up crooked numbers left and right. And, you know, they got that feeling last year when they are up 16 nothing in the playoffs and end up choking and getting bounced out from the Texans. So I think this is a little revenge game. It's a home game in Buffalo. Um so I think Josh Allen and the boys will be ready for this game. I love the intensity I've been seeing in videos of the Bills at practice this week. I uh, Give me the Bills. I think they're ready for this game, and they win this game by a touchdown or more. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to be taking the Colts, but I was really close to taking the Bills basically for the same reason. Um, I do like the value of the Colts and a couple things that are going for them. First off is that I think the one weakness of this Bills team – was kind of shown in that Tuesday game against the Titans in that if there's a team that can run the football and create some turnovers, then they can win against the Bills. And I think the Colts are kind of the living embodiment of that. Now, mm -hmm. with that being said, if they can't run the ball, Jonathan Taylor is a little bit banged up this week in practice, and they can't create turnovers, then I am not confident in this Colts team keeping up with the Bills offense. But I you know I I have an obligation to pick the Colts. I want to fade the public consensus because everyone is on the Bills. Everyone and their mother is on the Bills this week. I think the Bills, while are, are a really good football team, are getting a little bit too much hype. You know, six and a half points. You got to beat a good Colts football team by a touchdown. The only thing I'm scared of is just this game getting away from the Colts and them getting blown out. But I'm going to be going with the Colts this week. Let's move on. Rams, Seahawks, who you got for this one, boss? Uh, well, this is a messy game right here. But I got the Rams plus three and a half. And I I think the Rams can win this game easily. I, You know, in these playoffs, one of these favorite teams are going home. You know, one, one of these underdogs are going to pull out a victory. And I see it being with the Rams. I like plus three and a half. Golf is coming back. Cooper Cup is going to play. So, you know, at least they have their quarterback and their favorite target back. Um, listen, Aaron Donald and the boys are going to shut down this run game. And Russell Wilson hasn't been like Russell Wilson we've seen in the past in the later half of the season. So I like this defense to shake it up a little bit, create a little bit of turnovers. Jalen Ramsey should be on DK, shut him down, and just make enough plays to win this game and ultimately just cover the spread. Yeah, I'm also going to take the the Rams plus three and a half for a lot of the same reasons you said. Um, you know, this is this is a really weird football game because division rivals playing. There's going to be no fans for the Seahawks, which I think does really mitigate the impact of their home field advantage for this football mm -hmm. team. The past couple matchups have just been really scrappy between these two teams. And I don't think that we see the Rams get as bottled up in the red zone as we saw in their last matchup, which I think that people are just going to assume that happens. The Rams get Cam Akers back this week, and while they lose Daryl Henderson, I think that getting Cam Akers, who I have as a better pure runner of the football, will make a really huge impact for this Rams offense. We just need, if you're taking the Rams with us, we just need the Rams to put in three touchdowns they put in three touchdowns not only do i think they cover the spread i think they have a great shot to win the game now that's going to be tough but the health of jamal adams is going to be in question he's going to be a game time decision that i think will play 
But as long as, you know, we, we were talking before the episode, the two things that we know in this football game were three things, right? We know that obviously the Seahawks have the better quarterback, right? But mm-hmm. we also know that the Rams do have someone that can win the matchup of uh, one-on-one with DK Metcalf and Jalen Ramsey. He's proven that he can do that. And the other thing we know is that the Rams easily have the better pass rush and that Russell Wilson is a quarterback that if you're able to get consistent pressure on him and not let him hold the ball in the pocket and get out of the pocket to extend plays and make these huge throws, that that's how you can kind of beat the Seahawks. Um, so I, I do think that the Rams are, are one of the, the only teams in the league that are going to be able to consistently mitigate the Seahawks' impact on offense. So give me three and a half points in a game that is honestly a crapshoot. All right, Bucks versus Washington football team. Who you got here, boss? Uh, I'm on Bucks minus nine. I know the spread's a little big, but at the end of the day, Bucks are a better team than the football team. Uh, it's the GOAT. I'm not doubting the GOAT. And I think this Bucks offense is really flying high right now. They're hitting at all cylinders. Mike Evans is a game time decision. I don't think it really matters, to be honest. They got enough weapons to win without them and cover the spread. Um, but on the defensive side for the Bucks, I think this front seven is going to be a problem for this football team. Yeah, Alex Smith has been a tremendous story. But at the end of the day, I think he's going to have his hands full in this Bucks defense. And I kind of like them just coasting to a nice, easy double-digit win against the football team. Yeah, as you can see on the screen already, I am with you on the Bucks minus nine. I've been someone that has been betting the Bucks a lot on our picks Towards the end of the season, I really like what I'm seeing out of this Bucks football team now. And I think that Lions game, while it is the Lions and, the, you know, they had zero coaches playing a couple weeks ago and, you know, the Falcons game where they were able to come back. We are finally starting to see the Bucks play on all cylinders. So I think that's going to continue this week against the Washington football team. We were guys that liked the Washington football team. Um, we were taking them a little bit here and there during the middle of the season, but now, you know, a banged up Alex Smith and an offense that I really do not trust anymore. Like I said, in a couple weeks ago on a, on a previous picks episode, even if Alex Smith is, is playing for this team, he, he has lost all the momentum that he had earlier in the season. You know, he came back that first game against the Rams and looked really bad. And then, you know, started to get some momentum going, started to play really well, and it definitely showed against the Steelers, right? Now he's banged up again, and he's in and out of the lineup and whatnot. He is no, he is not the same quarterback that we saw in the middle of the season. I, he doesn't mm-hmm. have that consistency. You know, the receiving core of, of the Washington football team has been a little bit wishy-washy with, with Terry McLaurin's health in question. So I, I really don't think that the Washington football team has that same level of Alex Smith that we saw in the middle of the season. So I really like the bucks here with Washington football team. I'm not as sure this team can put up 10 points in this game. So as long as the bucks aren't turning the football over, I really like them to win in a blowout Uh, Rams Ravens versus Titans. This is the toughest game I had to pick this week. I, (laughs) this game, I, you know, we know if, if you listen to the podcast, we know who you're taking, Steve. You kind of said it on the last episode with your Super Bowl bet. So why don't you just get it out of the way? I'm staring away from the uh, spread this week, but I'm taking Ravens money line. I think, uh, yeah, you get a, a little higher odds, but I feel like that is the more value pick here because I, I'm this game is weird. It, it, they played before this season. It was an OT law, lost by the Ravens, and we all know what happened last year with the Titans' huge upset. But I do like the Ravens to come in in Tennessee. They got something to prove, and they just know they have to win this game. At the end of the day, you know, I don't trust this Titans' defense enough to make a stop, and I think this Ravens' offense is playing hot. So – if it ends up becoming a shootout, I like the Ravens' defense to make just a couple more stops in the Titans. And as long as the Ravens don't commit turnovers like they have in the past against this team, they should be totally fine to win just to win the football game. You know, if if we were able, if this was a regular week where we weren't taking every game, I would run away from this game. I am not picking this game. Yeah, but since we have to take someone. Uh, you know, 
I almost feel like I am forced to take the Titans plus three and a half. The public is on the Ravens right now. I get a team that has notoriously played well against this Ravens football team, football team beating them in the last two matchups. And, and lastly, the one thing I'm scared of with this Titans defense, you know, yeah, they haven't played well at all. The one thing I'm scared of is an opposing quarterback going for 400 passing yards and five touchdowns. And the one team that I don't think can do that against the Titans is the Ravens. And the reason being isn't because I think that Lamar Jackson is a bad passer. I, I'm actually one of the people that thinks he's a good passer of the football, and people underrate him completely still after an MVP season. The reason why is just I think that the Ravens' weapons on the outside are just a little bit too inconsistent. So I, I finally get a Titans secondary that doesn't have a, a, a an absolutely horrendous matchup, right? You know, against a team like the Packers – all these, all their receivers are just so in sync with with Aaron Rodgers that they just destroy the Titans defense that has no communication. It seems like I finally get a Ravens offense that we've seen them struggle. They're hot now. They've played some bad teams. I, I hate this pick. I, I really don't think I'm not very confident in the Titans. I'm scared that they are going to get absolutely blown out. To be honest, but. I, I can't deny the fact that I love them as a home dog. They're a team that that plays well against the Ravens. This is almost like a rivalry game. Now, we saw the last matchup where these two teams almost got into a fight before the game started. So I'll take the points of what I think is just going to be a really grindy football game. Bear Saints, here we go. What do you got here? Uh, another huge spread game, but I got the Saints at minus 10. Um I, I mean, the Saints are, I think, the best team in the NFC, and they should roll easily in this game. We saw last week where the Bears played one of those top teams in the NFC and the Packers, and historically they play bad against the Packers. I get that. But, you know, they're in the game for a little bit, and then at the end of the day they just can't, like, keep up, you know, just way way it is. I think it's more elite talent just around these bigger teams. And I kind of see that here. I could see a little bit of game maybe in the first half. But, you know, this is Drew Brees' send-off. This is, this is a Saints team that they feel they have been, you know, kind of ridiculed out of the playoffs by some bad calls in the past three years, you know, had some bad luck in these playoffs. So I feel like they're going to be guns and blazing, ready to go in, in the Superdome. They're going to bring the noise, bring the thunder. and I. D- even though I've said Mitchell Trubisky has turned a little bit of a corner maybe in his second effort, I still think this Saints defense is kind of licking at the chops right now. And I think they can hold David Montgomery down enough. And I like Saints minus 10 roll. Yeah, you know, it's kind of funny. We said a couple episodes that if we're the Saints and, and we could get matched up against the, the Bears or the Cardinals, is that we were saying we are much more scared of the Bears than the Cardinals. Well, looking back, Compared to now, I did not think that the Saints would be getting Michael Thomas back. You know, I was hearing reports that he was going to be done for the year. I get a Saints football team that has Drew Brees now. I have Michael Thomas, and now I get my running backs back off the COVID list. Oh, yeah. It is hard to pick against the Saints this week with all of that going for them. They're at home. They're up against a Bears offense. And, you know, we were talking before the episode. The key for the Saints to cover this spread is to score 34 points. Do you think the Saints can score 34 points? I do think the Saints this week can score 34 points. We saw against good football teams, the Bears lose every game where their opponent scores 24 or more points. This is a Bears football team that put up 23 last time they played the Saints and lost in overtime. Yep. Um, I think it's going to be a similar story to what we've seen with the Bears all year. This is going to be a team that puts up somewhere between 17 and 23 points. And I think that I'm going to get a Saints team that is that is hot now. Um, you know, they weren't as hot before a couple weeks ago, but they just thrashed the Vikings. Um, I, yeah, I, I think that the Saints team has finally found their groove. They're getting their guys back. And I think they're going to be able to put up 34 more points and cover this spread. Um, Steelers-Browns, last one. Who you got here? 
Well, first of all, I feel bad for Browns fans after some bad news today, but I'm taking Steelers minus six. Um, the Browns team have historically played terrible in Pittsburgh. I'm pretty sure they're like oh for their last 17. They're five and one against the five and eleven and one against the spread in Pittsburgh. They're without their head coach. They're without their OC. I, I just we've seen where like teams are without their their coaches going into games. They struggle, and now in a playoff format, when with a franchise that haven't been there since 2002. I see them really struggling against this Pittsburgh team that I think is ready to go. And division rival, they know them. And uh, they should be able to win this by – you're getting minus six. I I wouldn't be surprised if this line moves even more, but I, they should be able to win this game by a touchdown more easily. Yeah, well, unsurprisingly, in my Steelers run the north uh, long sleeve shirt, I am also going to be taking the Steelers minus six. You're right. Historically speaking, the Browns have really struggled in Heinz Field. Um, I'm just, like you said, happy that I am getting uh, an under a touchdown score or a spread. I, I don't think I'm as confident as you just because with this Steelers football team, especially the way that they've been playing now, we've, we've seen the offense make tons of mistakes. The linebacker spot for this football team is still a huge question mark, but yeah, you know, I just like the fact that I think that we're going to be able to get Baker Mayfield off his spot. He's a quarterback that still really struggles against pressure. So as long as the Steelers football team is able to mitigate the run and at least put pressure on Baker Mayfield, no Stefanski, a whole lot of coaches for them are out. I'm not sure they're going to be able to adjust as well as they would have been. So you're right. I'm going to be taking the Steelers minus six and, um, you know, we're both going to be taking a teaser. I'm actually surprised I'm not taking the Steelers in a teaser. I may add them real quick, but I'm going to go with my teaser first. Sorry, Steve. And my teaser this week, playoff teaser, I'm going to call it the the NFC South teaser. Um, Six-point teaser. It's going to be the Saints minus four, kind of in line with what we think is going to happen with the Saints just basically blowing out this Bears football team in the second half. And it's going to be with the Bucks plus three for a lot of the same reasons. I just think that that's a game where I'm getting a team that's just going to blow out a worse team. So I call it the NFC South six point teaser. And Steve, what is it? What is your teaser for this week? Well, now I got to come up for a name for my teaser. All right. I'm going to call my teaser, the Eastern time zone teaser where <laughs> Oh no! Actually, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. Actually, I could call it the night game teaser because both are be- being played at night. Now, I like Eastern Time Zone better. The Eastern Time Zone teaser is: I'm buying six points for two teams. I'm getting Bucks minus three, and I'm getting the Steelers at pick them. So all they have to do is win. I, I mean, Bucks should easily win this game by more than a field goal, unless something drastically happens. And Steelers again. The Browns don't have, you know, a chunk of their coaching staff that was a huge enforcement on how they were good this year. So Steelers just a win at home in a playoff format with Big Ben. You got to take that. And I'm going to arrive at that teaser. Yeah, I'm not even writing the name of your your teaser in here. That's just an abomination to naming things. Uh, What was it again? So you got Steelers pick them? Yeah, Steelers pick them and – uh, Bucks minus three. Both on the Bucks. Worry, we are heavy on the Bucks. If the Bucks lose, we are screwed. Yeah, true. But with that being said, those are our picks for the wild card round of the playoffs. We're going to be doing picks for every single round of the playoffs. If you made it this far in the video, please like, subscribe, comment, all that jazz. If you want more picks, um. We are also going to be tracking the picks by units now, aside from record. Kind of just too too late in the season, in the regular season, for us to, to just switch to units because we had so many games that we didn't have the units, the, the odds for the picks track where we are going to do that from now on. Um, so you get a better look at how we're actually doing, especially with things like dog of the week and, and just spreads in general, you know, the record just doesn't really show you how well gambling speaking we would be doing. So we're going to do that now from the playoffs and moving forward, but thank you so much for watching and peace out.